let's get this review in man what's up everybody we're back with another review yeah it's been a few weeks since my last one but you know sometimes life just gets in the way and puts a lot on your plate and you get caught up in all the various projects but you know what completely irrelevant to what we're talking about today we're going to talk about spider-man far from home yeah i'm uh about three weeks late on this but you know whatever man better late than never you know screw it uh here's the deal uh spider-man far from home yeah i saw this on opening day in glorious imax with some of the best sound i think i've ever heard in a theater so shout out to you amc woodlands i think i'm i think i'm gonna go there from now on for all my imax movies it was it was incredible you know it was very very good but um anyways as some of you may know, I'm a huge MCU fan, and I'm an even bigger Spider-Man fan, so you kind of already know my anticipation was through the roof, um, and this movie absolutely delivered in every way possible. I enjoyed it. I, I loved it. It was great. You know, it had everything, man, from the kids' storyline to Europe, Mysterio, the action sequences, the illusions, the elementals, Happy Hogan, Nick Fury, even though it really wasn't him, um, and just the overall arc of Peter becoming his true self and basically becoming a new man after the death of Tony. Uh, it was great. I loved it. I loved this film. As a matter of fact, I loved it so much, I might even say, yeah, it's probably my favorite Spider-Man film of all time. And uh, a lot of you might be like, really? So, yeah, I'll tell you why. So... Look, man, the way that Marvel Studios has cemented Tom Holland into this role of Peter Parker is pretty crazy. And one thing I love about this kid is his ability to display the conflicts of being an Avenger, but at the same time dealing with his personal life and his school activities. I mean, we've never really got that in the previous two franchises with Tobey Maguire or Andrew Garfield. Um, he just wants to be a damn kid, man, and enjoy his life with his friends. And in this film, I really enjoyed how they built upon his friendships and the chemistry between him and his friends. Most specifically, Michelle, you know, or MJ. You know, I thought her character was a little bit underwritten in the first film, but, you know, I, I think they expanded on her in a great way in this movie. I, I really liked their chemistry, and I hope to see it play out over the next few films. Um, I was also a huge fan of Peter's relationship with Happy Hogan. Uh, it was nice to see him brought back. I think they did a nice turnaround from Homecoming, because in Homecoming, Happy was kind of annoyed by this kid, and uh, in this film, they really build a nice rapport with each other, you know, especially after the death of Tony. You can really feel the loss of Tony in both of them, and I think they showcase that tremendously with, you know, a good friendship that looks like it's blossoming. Um, loved that scene on the ship where Happy's blasting ACDC and Peter starts building his new suit, completely reminiscent of the first Iron Man film. Really great vibes there. And uh, yeah, let's talk villain real quick, Mysterio. Holy shit, man. What a great villain. Uh, I thought Jake Gyllenhaal knocked it out of the park. You know, now going into this movie and being a big fan of the comics and classic animated show, I kind of already knew Mysterio was going to be a fraud and turn out to be the villain. It was really no surprise, as I'm sure most fans did. But to all the casual moviegoers that didn't know, I think, uh, I think they were still blown away by the twist. Um, it was nice, and I think they handled it very well. I really liked the tie-in to Civil War with the barf technology. It, uh... It really made you understand just how much of an asshole Tony Stark was to other people. And in turn, I understood Quentin Beck's frustrations, and I actually kind of felt bad for the guy. You know, that's not easy to do with a villain for me, but, um... And last, last but not least, man, the fucking illusion sequences. Holy shit, those were incredible. Um, that's probably some of the best visual sequences I've ever seen in the movie. Yeah, uh, just fantastic. If you haven't seen it, go see it for yourself. But, uh, yeah, overall, man, I was a huge fan of this film. I'm going to give this a 9 out of a 10. Go see it if you haven't already. I think this is Spider-Man at his absolute best. And I really can't wait to see where they take the story for a third one. Um, if I only had one complaint about this movie, I think it would be that I was a little bit disappointed that there weren't any Osborne or Oscorp or Sinister Six reveals or hints. But, uh, uh, hey, let's hope they're saving that for, you know, down the road. Maybe Spider-Man 3. Who knows? But... Hey, at least we got J. Jonah Jameson back with J.K. fucking Simmons. I will take that shit any day of the week. So, yeah, Spider-Man Far From Home, go see it. John Watts, the director, incredible second film. Loved it. Can't wait for a third one. We're out. Be sure to follow the podcast on Twitter and Instagram at The Indie Rundown and like our Facebook page, The Indie Rundown Podcast.